Jetman pilot failed to deploy the emergency parachute that was attached to the carbon fiber winged engine. Vince Reffitt was a man who defied gravity with every leap. With his trusty jetpack, Vince ventured into the vast expanse of the sky, fearlessly dancing among the clouds. His unparalleled courage led him to achieve remarkable feats, including over 177,000 parachute jumps and 1,400 base jumps. Yet little did he know, his boundless spirit would ultimately guide him towards an unforeseen and tragic fate. What really happened to him that led to his tragic end? Join us in today's video as we explore the life and tragic ending of Vince Reffitt. First Jump Vince Reffitt was born in France on September 15, 1984, to a family passionate about skydiving. His journey into the skies began unexpectedly when his father surprised him with his first tandem jump at the young age of 14. Despite being nervous, the experience left a lasting mark on Vince. However, it was his first solo jump at 15 that truly changed everything. As he stood at the edge of the plane, fear clouded Vince's mind. Yet, as he took the leap into the vast expanse of the sky, a remarkable transformation occurred. The fear melted away, giving way to an overwhelming feeling of excitement and freedom. In that moment, high above the ground, Vince discovered his passion for skydiving and knew he wanted to pursue it as a lifelong career. Reflecting on that decisive jump, Vince shared, When my feet touched the ground after that jump, I had a crystal clear realization. Skydiving was not just a hobby for me, it was my calling. The sensation of stability in the air was like nothing I had ever experienced before. This profound experience of finding happiness in the face of fear became the guiding force in Vince's life, thereby shaping his future pursuits and defining his identity as a skydiver. His time with Fred Fugan. Leaving his initial plans of becoming a carpenter and his participation in judo competitions behind, Vince Reffitt fully immersed himself in the world of skydiving. With determination and enthusiasm, he completed his accelerated freefall course in a remarkable four jumps. During this pivotal time, Vince formed a close friendship with Fred Fugan, a highly skilled and experienced free flyer who was five years his senior. Fred became Vince's mentor and guide in the realm of skydiving sharing his knowledge and expertise. Thanks to Fred's tutelage, Vince rapidly excelled in the sport and quickly became an exceptional skydiver in his own right. This marked the dynamic inception of his skydiving career, one that would take him on awe-inspiring adventures never before witnessed or even imagined. Moreover, this period also marked the beginning of an unbreakable bond between Vince and Fred. Over the course of two decades, they formed an inseparable partnership that defied conventional lines of friendship. Vince, with his cheeky humor, often quoted, We are not married, to playfully reiterate that their connection transcended the traditional realm of mere friendship. A significant turning point in Vince Reffitt and Fred Fugan's skydiving journey came when they caught the attention of Steph Fardell, the visionary behind the renowned skydiving team, Babylon. Steph recognized the extraordinary potential in these two young daredevils and extended an invitation for them to join his team. Under Steph's guidance, Vince, Fred, and Steph began their rigorous training as a freefly team. Freefly, a form of skydiving that focuses on dynamic acrobatic movements in the air, requires tremendous skill, precision, and synchronization. The trio embarked on a relentless pursuit of perfecting their craft pushing the boundaries of what was possible in the world of freefly. Their hard work and dedication paid off when they earned their spot on the French national team. Representing their country, Vince and Fred, now part of Babylon, went on to achieve remarkable success on the international stage. They became a force to be reckoned with, capturing the hearts of spectators and inspiring fellow skydivers. The Babylon team, with Vince and Fred as integral members, claimed victory in three consecutive world championships in freefly. Their triumphs were not limited to a single location, showcasing their exceptional skills on a global scale. In 2004, they secured the championship title in Brazil, followed by another victory in Germany in 2006, and a remarkable win on their home turf in France in 2008. Subsequent to their success as part of the Babylon team, 
Vince Reffitt and Fred Fugan moved to Empuria, Spain, where they continued their rigorous training and pushed the boundaries of what was possible in the world of freefly. Empuria served as a hub for skydivers from around the world, offering ideal conditions for training and competitions. It was in this vibrant skydiving community that Vince and Fred truly shone, making a name for themselves as two of the most talented and charismatic skydivers in the world. Their skills were highly sought after, and they were invited to load organize in various locations worldwide. Vince and Fred's friendly and open demeanor, coupled with an infectious sense of joy and happiness, earned them a reputation as champions who had a genuine interest in supporting and nurturing the growth of other skydivers. Vince and Fred's approach to skydiving was distinct from the elitist culture that had dominated the sport for decades. They ushered in a new era of camaraderie, where champions were not separate from the community, but part of it. They treated fellow skydivers as friends and offered guidance and mentorship without the sense of entitlement that was so prevalent in elite circles. Their approach was a breath of fresh air, and it resonated with skydivers around the world, inspiring a new generation of skydivers. Soul Flyers After their incredible journey with Babylon, Vince Reffitt and Fred Fugan found themselves craving a new challenge. In 2009, they made the decision to leave behind the world of competitive skydiving and seek out new horizons. Still brimming with youth and an insatiable thirst for adventure, their attention was captivated by the mesmerizing flights of Loic Jean Albert, the visionary behind the Soul Flyers. Loic had pioneered a groundbreaking technique known as proximity flying, which involved soaring through mountains and valleys with a wingsuit. He had become the first person to master this breathtaking discipline, pushing the limits of what was deemed possible in the world of human flight. Meanwhile, Vince and Fred were mesmerized and felt an immediate connection with the spirit of the Soul Flyers. Filled with excitement, they reached out to the legendary Loic and expressed their desire to become part of the Soul Flyers family. Leaving behind the competitive scene of skydiving, they longed to embrace the art of base jumping and the breathtaking adventures it promised. Loic, recognizing the shared spirit and passion that Vince and Fred possessed, welcomed them into the Soul Flyers ranks without hesitation. And so, a remarkable chapter in Vince and Fred's lives began. They embarked on a thrilling journey that took them to the most awe-inspiring locations around the world, as they joined Loic and other fellow Soul Flyers in their base-jumping escapades. Together, they challenged the boundaries of what was considered possible, leaping off cliffs, bridges, and skyscrapers, defying gravity with each courageous jump. Their journey with the Soul Flyers began with a bang, but it wasn't without its challenges. As they embarked on the most thrilling base-jumping adventures of their lives, they found themselves facing an unexpected hurdle. Loic Jean Albert had suffered a severe back injury while speed flying and that made him unable to engage in skydiving activities. The injury required surgery and cast uncertainty on when he could return to the sport he loved so much. Despite this setback, Loic encouraged Vince and Fred to continue on with the Soul Flyer's legacy, keeping their distinct identity alive. The absence of their mentor was a moment of reckoning for Vince and Fred, as they were left to navigate the rigorous world of base jumping without Loic by their side. Yet they took on the challenge with boundless enthusiasm and unwavering determination, fueled by the belief that the spirit of the Soul Flyers must endure. They continued to push boundaries and explore new horizons, channeling the creativity and joy of flight that had brought them together in the first place. During that time, the Soul Flyers were known for their daring wingsuit and base jumping stunts during that time. In 2010, they took on the challenge of performing epic head-down base jumps from the troll wall. Fred and Vince, two members of the Soul Flyers, fearlessly flew next to the cliff, showcasing their competitive signature move called the tete-a-tete. In 2013, the Soul Flyers decided to push their limits even further by attempting a base jump at night. They chose the stunning scenery of the Vercor and the Brento, located near Lake Garda in Italy, as their backdrop. Despite having flown in wingsuits at night previously, this was their first base wingsuit jump in the dark. To capture this unique experience, the Soul Flyers wore lights on their wingsuits creating a mesmerizing visual effect in the moonlight. The footage of their night jump was not only exhilarating, but also hauntingly beautiful. It perfectly showcased the surreal combination of the darkness, the illuminated wingsuits, and the breathtaking surroundings. Burj Khalifa Scenario The 
The year 2014 marked a momentous occasion for Vince and Fred as they embarked on a series of jumps that would capture the attention of people worldwide. Their destination was the iconic Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, standing at an awe-inspiring height of 828 meters. Making this dream a reality was no easy task. It took three years of relentless negotiations to secure permission for this audacious venture. Undeterred by the challenges, Vince and Fred approached the Burj Khalifa with determination and a desire to push the boundaries of what was possible. During this unforgettable adventure, they executed five breathtaking daytime jumps, defying gravity as they soared gracefully through the air. But it didn't stop there. The Soul Flyers craved an even greater thrill. Under the cover of darkness, they took on the unthinkable, a nighttime jump. A specially constructed platform at the pinnacle of the Burj Khalifa served as their launching pad for this daring escapade. Dressed in vibrant yellow suits and with orange smoke trailing behind them, Vince and Fred brought a sense of playfulness to the skies as they elegantly maneuvered around the towering structure. The resulting footage captured from the jumps is nothing short of astonishing. The video showcases their sheer skill and fearlessness, as well as the sheer joy and exhilaration they experienced during their flights. It is a testament to their unwavering passion for adventure and dedication to their craft. Since its release, the video documenting this extraordinary feat has amassed over 33 million views on YouTube alone. This incredible achievement has solidified Vince and Fred's status as pioneers in the field of extreme sports. It also inspired countless others to embrace their own sense of adventure and explore the limits of what is possible. High Altitude Mont Blanc In the same year 2014, the Soul Flyers took their love of adventure to new heights, quite literally. Fred and Vince embarked on a journey that would see them defy gravity from a breathtaking height of 33,000 feet, the very edge of Earth's atmosphere. This was a feat that had never been attempted before and required specialized equipment, including pressurized suits equipped with oxygen masks, ski goggles. As they flew through the air, the Soul Flyers needed to navigate through bone-chilling temperatures that plummeted to minus 50 degrees Celsius. It was a test of endurance and skill as they soared through the heavens, defying the frigid grip of the atmosphere. The choreography of their routine was stunning, a display of two supreme athletes pushing themselves and each other to the limits of what was possible. When it was time to deploy their parachutes, they had already spent seven minutes in total concentration. Upon doing so, they spent an additional six minutes gracefully descending alongside Mont Blanc, expertly maneuvering through the landscape and their canopies. It was a mesmerizing display of skill and grace, a testament to the years of rigorous training the Soul Flyers had undergone. For Fred and Vince, this was another opportunity to do something that had never been done before, and to do it together. Their bond was unbreakable, forged through shared experiences that most people could only dream of. We were so happy to have done another crazy thing together again with us too. That's how it works they shared afterwards. This jump was yet another in a long line of incredible achievements for the Soul Flyers. Door in the Sky In the picturesque region of Jungfrau, Switzerland, Vince found himself captivated by a unique dream. It was the year 2017 when he awoke one morning, filled with a vision of jumping off a mountain and seamlessly entering a plane mid-flight. This extraordinary vision was a twist on a remarkable feat achieved by Patrick de Gaillardon the renowned pioneer of the modern wingsuit. In 1997, Patrick had stunned the world when he successfully leaped from a Porter aircraft and defied gravity with his wingsuit, and then miraculously re-entered the same plane. Though Vince had never met Patrick, he held great admiration for the legendary figure and his remarkable achievements. Patrick's remarkable accomplishments served as an endless source of inspiration for the young Frenchman. Driven by his dream and the indomitable spirit of the wingsuit pioneers, Vince set out to turn this fantastical idea into a reality. He meticulously planned each detail, taking into account the challenges and risks that lay ahead. The Jungfrau, with its majestic mountains and breathtaking landscapes, served as the ideal canvas for this audacious endeavor. When the day finally arrived, Vince stood atop the mountain, filled with a mix of excitement and nerves. With his wingsuit securely fastened, he leaped into the vast openness, feeling the exhilaration of the wind rushing past him. The scenery was nothing short of magical as he navigated through the world beneath him, gracefully maneuvering through the valleys and peaks. After dedicating four months to intense training, Fred and Vince were finally ready to embark on their dream project. 
However, their path to success was not without obstacles. Early attempts were marred by an unexpected injury, setting them back and testing their resilience. But they refused to let setbacks define them. With unwavering determination, they pressed forward, knowing that their vision was within reach. The stunning beauty of the Swiss Alps unfolded beneath them, a testament to the wonders of the natural world. Each movement and maneuver was a testament to their unwavering dedication and countless hours of training. Flying in perfect synchronization, Fred and Vince skillfully descended in their wingsuits. Their bodies became one with the wind as they navigated the twists and turns of the landscape with the precision of seasoned acrobats. But the journey didn't end there. The moment they had envisioned and strived for was yet to come. With the Porter aircraft moving at a staggering 80 miles per hour, Fred and Vince approached with impeccable timing. With a burst of energy, they seamlessly entered the plane like two celestial beings merging with the skies. Their exit from the porter was a sight to behold. In perfect formation, their wingsuits spread wide. They soared alongside the aircraft, paying homage to the groundbreaking achievement of Patrick de Gaillardon two decades prior. The convergence of past and present, of dreams realized and legacies honored, was a testament to the indomitable human spirit and the relentless pursuit of pushing beyond what is thought possible. For Fred and Vince, this moment was more than just a personal triumph. It was a tribute to the pioneers who came before them and an inspiration to aspiring adventurers and dreamers worldwide. They became living embodiments of the human capacity to overcome adversity, embrace resilience, and transform dreams into reality. Jetman Experience Afterwards, Vince chose to do something really brave. He didn't just fly with planes and parachutes while wearing a special suit with wings. He also became part of a special group called the Jetmen, who are very skilled flyers. It all began in 2009 when Vince had a fortunate encounter with Eve Rossi, the ingenious creator of the Jetmen, during their training in Empuria Brava, alongside the renowned Babylon team. Drawn by his natural curiosity and a burning desire to experience the unimaginable, Vincent couldn't resist the temptation of becoming a partaker in the Jetman experience. During that time, the Jetman apparatus consisted of a magnificent, large, rigid wing without an engine. Undeterred by the absence of propulsion, Vincent wholeheartedly accepted the challenge and embarked on two daring flights that would leave anyone in awe. One particular snapshot captured Vincent fearlessly flying in close formation with a Porter aircraft, astonishingly raising his fingers to his nose, confidently declaring, Les doigts dans le nez, which translates to, this is a piece of cake, in English. Vince constantly pushed the boundaries of what was possible. His daring feats became a global sensation, captivating and mesmerizing audiences worldwide. It seemed that everywhere you looked on social media, Vince's breathtaking stunts went viral, generating waves of excitement and fascination. From soaring through the air in a wingsuit to gracefully descending with a parachute, Vince's thirst for adventure knew no bounds. But what set him apart was his infectious spirit and unwavering belief that it was all just a thrilling game, a way to have immense fun. For Vince, the sky was his playground, and he relished every moment spent there. One moment, he would be donning a wingsuit, hurtling through the air like a human missile, defying gravity with an effortless grace that left spectators in awe. The next, he would be strapping on a parachute, descending with a level of control and finesse that seemed almost surreal. And on certain occasions, he was even known to strap on a power jet pack, propelling himself through the sky with a thunderous roar, like a modern-day superhero. But amidst the adrenaline-pumping excitement and the jaw-dropping stunts, Vince found his true calling in the vast expanse of the sky. It was where he felt most at home, completely at peace with himself and the world. Jet Formation Flights through months of dedicated training and unwavering determination, Vince embarked on a remarkable journey to master the art of harnessing the power of the Jetman. What began as a simple curiosity soon evolved into a sophisticated flying machine, equipped with modern jet engines that could reach scorching temperatures of 1,000 degrees Celsius. At a staggering altitude of 1,832 feet, the Jetman donned a cutting-edge carbon fiber wing, powered by not one, but four mini-jet engines. Controlled solely by the human body, 
This groundbreaking equipment propelled Vince to reach mind-boggling speeds of up to 250 miles per hour. With the ability to seamlessly hover, change direction in the blink of an eye, and even execute daring loops in mid-air, Vince had unlocked a new realm of aviation that seemed almost unimaginable. But Vince was not alone in his quest to conquer the skies with the Jetman. Guided by the knowledgeable mentorship of Eves Rossi, Vince blazed a path that inspired others to join in their incredible aerial adventures. Fred, captivated by the boundless possibilities offered by the Jetman, eagerly followed in Vince's footsteps, becoming a fierce participant in this extraordinary journey. The remarkable advancements made by Eve and his team caught the attention of Skydive Dubai, who saw the immense potential in this groundbreaking project. With their generous sponsorship, Eves and his Jetman venture received the support they needed to further refine their skills and push the boundaries of what was possible. It was in the vibrant city of Dubai, amidst its shimmering skyline and boundless ambition, that Vince joined forces with Eves in 2011. Together, they prepared to elevate their flying prowess to unprecedented heights. Later on, in 2016, Vince embarked on a series of jumps that would etch unforgettable memories into his heart and the annals of aviation history. These jumps were unlike any other, as he found himself soaring alongside the iconic jet fighter pilots of the Patrouille de France, the very heroes that had captivated his imagination since childhood. The emotion and significance of this experience were so overwhelming that Vincent had to remind himself not to shed tears while airborne. As Vince took to the skies alongside the skilled and daring pilots of the Patrouille de France, he realized that he was living out a lifelong dream. These brave aviators, with their meticulously choreographed aerial displays and synchronized maneuvers, had always been a symbol of inspiration and admiration for Vince. To finally find himself flying in their esteemed company was a testament to his own extraordinary journey and an affirmation of his courage and skill. The world's biggest plane experience. Back in the year 2015, Vince and Eves achieved something truly remarkable. They flew the Jetman, an incredibly small flying machine, alongside the largest passenger aircraft in the world, an Airbus A380. To give you an idea of the scale, they were smaller than the winglet of the A380. That's the small vertical part at the tip of its wing. This breathtaking aerial performance took place against the backdrop of the magnificent Palm Jumeirah and the iconic Dubai skyline. It captured the attention and imagination of everyone who witnessed it. Passengers aboard the enormous airliner even got the incredible chance to wave at the Soul Flyers during this extraordinary airborne display. But Vince had aspirations beyond defying physics. In December of that year, he had a special plan in mind to propose to the love of his life. He chose a fitting moment. While Agnes was flying alongside him in a helicopter, he seized the opportunity to ask for her hand in marriage. On the back of his jetpack wings, he had written, Agnes, will you marry me? It was a gesture filled with romance, and how could she possibly refuse? Their love story continued, and they tied the knot in May 2017. Taking the vision further, Vince was always pushing himself to new heights. In February 2020, he attempted something remarkable in Dubai. Unlike his previous flights where he launched from helicopters or tall buildings, this time he took off directly from the ground. He utilized a new computerized stabilization system that allowed him to hover in flight. The jet wing he used had the capability to ascend to an altitude of 6,000 feet, and Vince could achieve speeds of up to approximately 150 miles per hour. For a safe landing, he relied on a parachute. In 2015, speaking to the Associated Press, Vince described the sensation of freedom, he said. When I am skydiving, I feel a sense of freedom, but I am always descending. With the jetpack, however, I can truly soar like a bird. However, it was the very same jetman that eventually led to a tragic end for Vince. Tuesday, November 17, 2020, began like any other day for Vince. But during a training session in the deserts of Dubai, tragedy struck. As the sun painted the sky, Vince and his team gathered for a pre-flight briefing. They were getting ready for an extraordinary training exercise. The goal was to simulate taking off from the ground, following a triangular flight path, and executing a jet-powered landing on an 800-ton platform. They planned to use a helicopter at the specified altitude to mimic the platform. It seemed like just another day for a man who thrived on defying gravity. As the terrifying last minutes of Vince Reffitt neared, they discussed the risks involved in flying at 800 feet. They had a backup plan in case anything went wrong during the flight, 
a pyro rocket emergency parachute. If needed, they could deploy it to regain control. As the engines roared to life, Vince's jetman lifted him into the sky. For a brief moment, he felt the familiar thrill he had known so many times before. However, something went terribly wrong. The video footage from a camera attached to his helmet captured the alarming moment when Vince lost control, causing him to enter an uncontrollable backflip while hovering 800 feet above the ground. Backflips like this were not unusual when using the wings, and they could typically be corrected by thrusting forward during the flip. Vince had managed to recover from similar flips in the past, but those incidents occurred at higher altitudes. We can only imagine what he must have been thinking during those tense moments before the flight. The team had discussed safety measures. The emergency parachute was there to ensure their safety, to bring them back to the ground safely in case of any mishaps. However, for reasons unknown, Vince did not opt to use this safety precaution. Maybe it was the natural instinct of an experienced risk-taker to struggle for control, or perhaps it was the drive to achieve what seemed impossible. As he tumbled through the sky above Dubai, his hands moved as if he still had hope of correcting the backflip and stabilizing his jet wing. It was a courageous and determined effort, but unfortunately, it was already too late. The video footage revealed the parachute deploying, but it was a tragic sight. It unfolded only after Vince had collided with the unyielding ground below. Unfortunately, Vince passed away upon impact. He was 36 years old at the time of the tragic accident. Investigators from the General Civil Aviation Authority carried out a comprehensive examination. Their findings presented a perplexing mystery. There was no evident reason why Vince did not activate his parachute during the fall. Additionally, their investigation concluded that the jet wing exhibited no mechanical issues. It had functioned perfectly. The tragic accident involving Vince Reffitt shook the world of extreme sports. He had always embraced the thrill of living on the edge, soaring through the skies and challenging gravity itself. However, on that unfortunate day, the very sky that had been his playground became his final resting place. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.